the art of songwriting um, is a very, uh, you know, unique uh, art to go into because um, it brings a lot of satisfaction. That's one of the things that songwriting does to me. It brings satisfaction. Um, I'm satisfied with with a product when I have completed a song and the song is finished and I'm anxious to put the music to the song. Um, what I do is um, I structure my song in such a way that it wouldn't be difficult to arrange music to it. Now, let me see if I can operate this, uh, this uh, mouse here. Yeah. So what I'm going to talk about right now is the three parts of of uh, the, the songwriting, things that you should know about. The rhythm, the tune, and the lyrics. And, and they come in that order. The rhythm, the, the tune, and the lyrics. When you're about to write a song, the first thing you must do is create a rhythm. You can create a fast rhythm. You can create a slow rhythm. But whatever rhythm you, cre you create, it's always important to remember that you want to build your song around your rhythm. Your, your song is to be built around your rhythm. The rhythm is a timing pattern of frequency by which each note occurs in the song at a particular time and in sequence. So if I do this, that creates a rhythm, okay? So I first would put that in my head when I'm about to write a song. And then with that kind of a skeleton, I build a tune around the song. So as the song notes are deployed one by one, they must follow a specific pattern. That's a rhythm. This pattern and speed constitute the rhythm of the song. Now, once the rhythm is built, and once the rhythm is in your head, you know, there was an old song that I used to listen to back in the day, um, because I'm over 50, of course. <laughs> There's a song that a Calypsonian used to sing called A Hearing a Bass, The Man in My Head. I don't know if any of you heard, um, heard that um, song before. But that song goes, boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 right? It's an old, it's an old calypso, and for the older folks who know it. But once you have recreated that tune in your head, ah, sorry, that, that rhythm in your head, it's time for the tune, okay? Now, you can, you can just create a crazy tune. The tune doesn't have to be something defined as yet, but just start with something simple and, and crazy, and as you go along, you modify it. The tune is a definite pattern of notes occurring and reoccurring in sequence throughout the song. The tune and the rhythm travel together through the song. So the song and the, the tune and the rhythm must be combined. If the song is designed with a rhythm change, right, the tune must be adjusted to speed up or slow down to merge with the rhythm, right? So all go hand in hand. It's like it's like the, the um the, the tune is following the rhythm, or the rhythm following, following the tune. Wherever you go, wherever one go, the other one must go. You cannot have um a tune that is that is fast in one one place and the rhythm is left lagging behind. Everything must be merging together. While timing carries the rhythm, the rhythm carries the tune. That's important to remember. While the timing Carries the rhythm. This rhythm now will carry the tune. Okay, the tune enables the same number and same pattern of notes to be repeated on each verse of the song. So I heard that you're going to do a, a, a two verse song, a, a song with two verses. So the tune will have will enable you to to create the same notes for one verse as the other verse because the tune would be something standard. The tune gives the song identity. And another term for the tune, as, as Mr. Um, Shirajit talked about, another name for the tune is the melody. 
melody and, and tune are interchangeable. So when you hear someone talk about melody, all it means is a tune. That's all. Okay? All right. Let's go to the other slide. Now, this one is lyrics. And this is what I'm focusing on right now. Uh, lyrics are essentially words that are composed to make up the song. Lyrics give the song meaning. Now, your song must have meaning. Your song cannot be ad hoc. All right? It must have a definition. It must have some substance to it. If there is no lyrics, or if the lyrics is just vague, there would be no song. All we would be hearing is a rhythm followed by the, a meaningless tune and just empty music. And, and nothing is wrong with that. Nothing is wrong with, 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 with music and, and, and rhythm. Nothing is wrong with that. But that's just, just something for you to relax by. You want to be forceful. You want to be aggressive here. So you're going to put in your, your, your lyrics and you're going to write those lyrics with everything you got, with meaning, right? So the, the, the lyrics here are important because, like I say here, um, we may therefore say, in the, in the last point it says, we may therefore say that while the rhythm and the tune makes the skeleton of the song, the skeleton, the, 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 the lyrics represent what? The flesh, right? So now you put on the flesh on the, on the skeleton to make the body of the song, all right? It's important. And the lyrics can be the message which is carried through the rhythm and the tune. All right. Writing the right lyrics. Before one can set out to write acceptable lyrics, and I'm, and I'm writing the word acceptable here because you, your lyrics mu must not be offensive. Uh, because people get turned off by your offense. As, as uh, Trinity was saying, saying a while ago, your lyrics must be catchy, right? Anything catchy is not offensive. So it must be acceptable. Before you can write a song, the songwriter must, be, uh, he or she must first have a defined theme for the work. You must have, have a right theme. And I, I, I'm, I'm sure that ECCB will give you uh, uh, some option to choose some themes. I think there are three themes to choose from. Right. The writer must be knowledgeable of the theme. Whatever theme you choose to write on, you must be knowledgeable of that theme, whether it is by your own experience, as Trilogy um, was interacting a while ago, as he was interacting, whether it's by your own experience or by your own learning. Now, as you go from day to day, you learn, right? Every day you learn something. And every day you experience something. So, so you must be knowledgeable about what you are writing about. Your theme must be something that you know about. Once the theme is identified, the songwriter may set out to write, always endeavoring not to deviate from the theme. Yeah. You may be tempted to go in another direction while you're writing, right? But it's important to not stick with the theme. If your theme is about um, climate change, stick to climate change. If your theme is about the ECCDB um, new digital currency, stick to that. Don't change anything from that. You know, you may deviate a little bit, but stay within the realm of your theme, always. Remember that a song is to be sung to an audience. You don't write a song for yourself. You write a song for an audience, and it must carry an interesting message for the audience to identify with and appreciate. The songwriter must be respectful enough to enable the audience to understand the message of the song. Seek to be inspired while you're writing. Try your best to be motivated uh, by inspiration while you write and inspire the audience while you sing. A good song must not contain offensive jargon or subtle slang. Now, I don't need to say that because I'm sure that most of you would be knowledgeable or would be keen enough to to walk the <clears throat> to work on the the, um, the high road when you're writing your song, and not to be um, you know not write smart, I should say. Okay, so I think we have all good people around us, right? Good good students who are willing to to stick to moral stuff. Now I'm going to come to two elements of lyrics, and these two elements are very important for us to understand. The first one is meter, the other one is rhyme. What is meter? 
Meter is a specific number of notes that fit into a line of a song to make a definite pattern within the song's rhythm. So here you have your, 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 your rhythm and your tune, right? But then you also have your words or your lyrics. Now, these words have something called syllables, right? And I'm sure that um, um, trilogy, <laughs> if, you, if you have written songs, you sometimes find that it is sometimes hard to mesh all of your words in one line, right? In order uh, and still keep the smoothness of the song. You understand? The song must be kept smooth. But if you put too many words in one line, right, the song becomes bumpy, right? So you have to adjust the the, the, the meter of the of the um, syllables. Each syllable in each line represents one note and is related to what is called syllabic meter. A syllabic meter is the formation of a number of notes within a line. So you have to take it line by line. Once you go through line by line, and once all your lines are smooth and meshing with your rhythm, right, you got no problem. But if you have too many words, again, let me say this, if you have too many words in a, in a line, or you have two less lines, in, a, in a, two less words in a line, the song will sound deficient, or it will sound bumpy one way or the other. Each line, uh, sorry, each line of each verse of the song must carry a specific number of notes to match the rhythm. And I'm sure that Trilogy understands this. And I want also the students to understand it. I mean, you may have this to look at while you are writing a song, so you utilize it enough. This is my own experience, okay? The notes or syllables must conform to the rhythm so that the song can flow smoothly. I said it before. If the line has too many words or too many notes for the rhythm, then the meter count is too high and the word count must be adjusted down to match the syllabic meter. Now, if the line has too few, too, too few notes for the rhythm, then the meter count is too low and the word count must be adjusted up to match the syllabic meter, all right? What is a rhyme? Everybody knows what is a rhyme, maybe, <laughs> you would imagine. Different words with similar songs and pronunciations at the endings are called rhymes. Let me say that again. Now, this is my own definition from my own uh, um, experience. Uh, Webster or Collins or Oxford dictionaries might have different meanings, but basically they fall within this ambit. Different words with similar songs and pronunciation at their endings are called rhymes. As children, we might have heard or recited the nursery rhyme, Jack and Jill went up a hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. All right? Now we see the rhymes in the song. Jill, hill, water, but down distance, we don't know what is the next word or the next rhyme for water. We don't see it until we reach the end. What's the next rhyme for water? Can anybody tell me? After. After, the word after, that's right. Now, there's something called a rhyme scheme. Here we have another rhyme with a design rhyme, rhyme scheme. And we already distinguished the fact that the word after uh, rhymes with water. The lines of the words of the songs must be designate, designated as a rhyme scheme too. Now you have a rhyme scheme and Jill and Hill is A, A right? Water is B, but then you come to another word that is not sound, that doesn't sound like water. It is dung. So that goes to C. And crong also matches with dung. So that also goes with C. And then the last one is B because water and after rhymes. So the last uh, letter for that name scheme, a rhyme scheme there would be a B. So the, name, the rhyme scheme in this song is A-A-B-C-C-B. 
A A B C C B. That's a rhyme scheme. All right. So always remember that your your med melody or your tune doesn't sound right unless it has a rhyme. You know, for for people of other languages like French and Spanish and so forth, we um they sing, and you can't define the rhyme in their songs. Uh, um, the, what what carries their songs is their rhythm. Okay, um, you might find fulfillment when listening to a French song, a, a real French song. I don't mean a patois song. I mean I say a real French song or a real Spanish song. You might find fulfillment and listen to that because you can identify it with that. But in English, we are always basing our uh, liking for a song, our attraction to a song by the rhythm and the rhyme. Rhythm and rhyme. All right? Rhythm and rhyme. Showing a rhyme scheme for a song. Now, this is a song that I just wrote a couple of days ago. Um, it's called Silent Night. Oh, one silent night. One silent night. Um, it is related to Christmas because I love writing Christmas songs, right? And it, the first the first line says, one silent night, the world was filled with joy. That's poetic, isn't it? One silent night, the world was filled with joy. Now, this might sound like a kind of plagiarism because there's a, a, a song called Silent Night, Holy Night, All is Calm, All is Bright. But I'll get into plagiarism later on. Right, but let me say here that this is not plagiarism because "Silent Night" is a song that we term as being a public domain song. So I can use the words the words together, "Silent Night," and you know there's also a song that says "Joy to the world, the Lord has come." So the joy is joy is a common feeling. So I can use the word joy. Okay, when you're writing your song, always remember do not copy somebody else's um, lyrics. It's important to stick to your own lyrics. And the second verse is, cause the angels brought news that mirrors, uh, news of mirrors the little boy. Now, I can sing this song for you, right? Um, just for you to listen to how it is run, okay? On one silent night, the world was filled with joy. Cause the angels brought the news of Mary's baby boy, a savior who redeemed mankind from sin, who would open up their hearts to let him in. That's the first verse, right? And so you see, it, it sounds smooth, right? On one silent night, you see, on one silent night, you're putting your audience, captivating their, their thoughts on a night, the night when Christ was born, right? Now, let me go down to the next slide and I'll show you something different. This, uh, this slide here is the chorus, of course. And you see that this chorus here, in relation to the verses, has a different rhyme scheme. The verses has simple rhyme scheme. This is a very simple rhyme scheme. A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B. Very, very simple, right? But when we get to the chorus, we have an eight line of chorus. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. And it has a very complicated uh, rhyme scheme. You got A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D. Look at that. It's not A, A, B, B anymore, like the first um, the verses. It has no change. The rhyme scheme, the rhyme pattern has no change. Because number one, there are more lines. And number two, this builds the chorus of the song. Here we can see a defined rhyme scheme in the chorus, as well as the verses. Now let us experiment with meter a little bit. Meter, you realize what meter is, right? It's the, the number of of conks or notes in the line, right? That's supposed to fit within the rhythm. What if we make option one a verse, this verse here? Now, let me sing this verse. This is a, this is a augmentation or enhancement of the first verse, right? Now you can play with your verses. You can, you can um, adjust them. You can, you can 
uh, you know, modify them up or down, depending on your liking. But at the end of the day, there must be something that the audience must also like. So listen to this, this um, verse now. One silent night, the world was filled with joy. Now that line there is different to the first line in the previous verse. Because the previous verse said, on one silent night, da 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 na da, da da. You listen to the rhythm, da 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 na da. Oh, sorry, you listen to the, the meter, da 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 na da. Yeah, okay. Listen to this one now, da da na da. One silent night. So it's up to you to like prefer what do you want to hear. You want to hear da 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 na da. Or you want to hear Da, da, na, da. Which one you want to hear? It's up to your liking. Okay, let's look at it at the um the third verse. On one side, the, sorry, the third line. On one silent night, the world was filled with joy. Cause the angels brought the news of Mary's baby boy, a savior who would redeem mankind, who died to set us free. He gave his life to ransom you and me. We still stick with the same rhythm, but we have augmented or we have enhanced the, the meter, right? We have more words added to the third line than in the first um the first verse, the first um uh, version of the verse. This optional version of the first verse shows a difference in meter, okay? On the first line, as well as the third line, we can compare, and we have compared already, we saw the difference. Um, the first version at the top contains 11 syllabic notes in the first line. Let's just try to count them. Okay, this is important, all right? Because this is gonna happen when you're writing your song. On one silent night, let's count. Can you count along with me? Da 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 da. How many is that? Eleven, right? Eleven notes. Again. Da 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 da. So eleven conks in a meter. All right. We have eleven conks in a meter. That's in the first in the first version. Have eleven syllabic notes in the first line. Well, the bottom version now, which is this one here, which we are at, has 10, all right? So because we take out the word on, right? Take note that word on, right? And just start with the word one, right? Makes it 10. Of course, you know, 11 minus one is 10. So right, right now we see the, the first verse have, have, um, have 10 notes, right? And likewise, now we, let's go to the, the, um, the third line, the third line. The first version on top contains 10 syllabic notes in the third line. All right, let's go to, to that um, first version on top. Oh, wow. I'm going out of the way. Where am I? Okay. Right. Um, the third line. All right. As Savior who. Sorry. As Savior who'd. Right? Now remember, I say who'd. That contraction is important because if I would say a savior who would, that would make the, the meter over, over, overpowered, right? Too much too much words. So I could use the contraction who would. And sometimes you have to use this, you have to use contractions instead of, of two words. So you merge, you merge uh, two words in one. Let's go again. The count. A savior who redeem mankind from sin. That's 10, 10 um, notes, right? All right. So we have 10 notes, in, we have in the, in, the, in the top, we have 10 siblic notes. And while at the bottom, which is this one here, right? Which is this verse here, we have 14 notes and we can count them. A savior who redeem mankind, who died to set us free. Da, 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 10 and 4, 14, right? So we have 14 
uh, nodes in that one. So we see we must have the the um, the verses flowing smoothly with the right number of uh, nodes. Okay. So that's it for meter, right? And that's it for meter, and and um, for meter and and rhyme. Sorry, yeah, rhyme and meter. Now we go to bridge. What is a bridge? A bridge is a song. Sorry, a bridge in a song is a a particular dedicated passage in the song that is used to identify or uh, emphasize or concretize the message of the song. Let me read, let me read that again for good measure. A bridge in a song is a particular dedicated passage in the song that is used to emphasize or concretize the message of the song. So in other words, the bridge gives more weight to the rest of the verses. The bridge emphasizes the bridge the bridge hits home, you know. Uh, you have your verses, yes, but the bridge is something that 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 goes above and beyond the verses, right? The boss, the, the bridge is not a chorus. The chorus is something that you repeat throughout the song, but a, the bridge only comes in one time. You shouldn't have two bridges in a song. Or you, you should not sing a bridge twice in a song. The bridge comes in once, and you leave your audience with that one time, right? That that should impact the audience. It concretizes or emphasizes the message of the song. It is a short verse, usually comprising of four special lines within the song that are sung with a different tune. Here you see the bridge must have a different tune and perhaps a different rhythm, okay, to the verses and to the chorus, right? Has a different tune. It's not like the, the, the chorus. It's not like the verses. It has an offset tune. A bridge is usually placed after the second verse and before the singing of the last chorus. That's important. Don't put your bridge up too high and don't put it down too low, right? Put it just like after the second verse, yeah? It, it can fit well here. And you can sing your chorus twice at the end if you want to, but make sure your bridge goes in and make a great impact to solidify your, your message of the song. Apart from bringing emphasis to the message of the song, a bridge featured in the song, once it is composed right, it makes the song more what? More attractive. People look forward to the bridge. And that's me. When I hear a song, especially nowadays, right? If I listen to a song and the song don't have a bridge, I don't feel satisfied. I need to hear that offset, you know, go offset, come back in with the emphasis come back in with that big um, you know, force of concretizing the words of the song and make it more meaningful, right? A bridge in a song, though, you don't have to do it. It's up to you. It's optional. But I prefer a bridge, okay? Okay. Ah, now here is a very important one, plagiarism. Many folks have gotten in trouble because they have uh, plagiarized people's music. And especially nowadays, um, when there is all sorts of um, gadgets and technology, it's easy to plagiarize other people's music. But you you can hardly get away with it if the the original if the original artist uh, intends to sue. Okay. Now, what is plagiarism? In songwriting, plagiarism is the act of taking a part of someone else's written part of a song and making it appear as if it is your own original work, right? In other words, you pretend. It's like cheating, right? <laughs> of course. It's a kind of cheating, of course, and um, you don't want to get involved in that. Plagiarism, plagiarism can amount to a crime and can be therefore punishable by law, right? So don't be caught red-handed and don't be caught before the judge because, you know, you could face a good penalty if you plagiarize a song. And if you don't have a good lawyer to defend you, it could be very, very hard on your side. A great burden just through a song. If a song is old and ancient, it is usually considered as public domain, and the songwriter may be free to use portions of such a song at will. Still, for the sake of writing a pure song, such practices should be limited, right? So you should limit your use of even uh, public domain songs, all right? So, if 
final thing. Now, once you have written your song, you want to have a title for your song. And to me, I don't know, I, I think um, Trilogy hit this one. For me, it, your song title is very important because it needs to catch the audience's attention. The song title should be aligned with the theme of the song. So again, if your song is on the CCB dollar or digital currency, if your song is on climate change or poverty in the Caribbean or whatever, right? Your, your title should reflect the message of that theme, okay? It might reflect a particular line or phrase of the song, right? Again, the, the song title might, might reflect a particular line in the song or a particular phrase. Or maybe if the song has a repetitive, like Trilogy was saying a while ago, if it has a re repetitive notion, you can always use that as a, the title of the song once it's impactful. And it's a good practice to wait until the song writing is completed. So when your project is finished, then you give your song in its name before giving the song a name. This idea here is to marry the contents of the song with the title, right? Uh, if you have an odd title, but a good song, it is not effective. You need to marry the contents of the song with, with, the, uh, with the title of the song. Thank you for your action, uh, attention, sorry, for your attention, sorry. Yes, <laughs> Thank wish you. wish you all the best of luck in the future. Now, the next step now is to go to the studio and get some music done to your song, okay, after you've written it.